So Lightning must strike twice for Eric Ten Hag this season. We have to beat Liverpool at home for the second time for salvaging anything from this season. Not two videos ago, I was talking about the fear of what was happening with the Europa League. Never mind what was going on with Aston Villa and Spurs in the Champions League. And today, both West Ham and Newcastle have both won and are right on our tails. The league table doesn't lie. The league table is right there below. When I get into that, how important this game is, go over everything that is Manchester United v Liverpool and how you guys are feeling ahead of this one. Because I feel like the expectations have lowered since the last time we played Liverpool. I remember going into that game thinking... I really feel confident about it. This one, completely different ball game altogether. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday Night Show. We're looking ahead to the game tomorrow against Liverpool. This is for every United TV. I'm Adam. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. You've had a great weekend so far. Results have not gone our way because we're looking below us instead of ahead of us. Uh, everyone was looking at the Aston Villa game. I was looking at West Ham and Newcastle. Both winning and are both, un well, within a single point of us. Like, that's how serious the matter is right now with Manchester United and the Europa League. Forget about the Champions League. It does look like, if we don't get our acts together in the league, that we are solely reliant on beating City in the FA Cup. I say City because if Chelsea turn up like they did against us, City will tear them apart in the semi-final in a couple of weeks. I have no doubt of that. And it'll be United getting handed, uh, having their asses handed it to them um, against City in the final as well. And that will be the end of Ten Hag and there'll be no comeback from that. Yeah, the truth hurts, doesn't it? It really does. But let's get into the chat. Let's get into everything that's going on. Let's talk United-Liverpool. What can we expect? Sorry, I'm a little bit late, guys. My chair collapsed, like literally fell apart. It's, <laughs> it's not working anymore and I need a new one. Kaz was up here trying to help me out. I was having a meltdown. Technology wasn't working. Chair's falling apart. Yeah, say no more, and it's Liverpool tomorrow, and the pressure is well and truly on, like, to a different level right now for Eric Ten Hag. You, it's, it's one of them games tomorrow that I look at and I go, performance-wise, I just don't expect anything, like, except effort. Maybe we're going to get some extra effort from certain players. I want to talk about the actual team and what we expect the lineup to be as well, because that's a bit of a weird one. Like, we talked about the issues in defence, but I don't know what he's going to do with what's happening up front. Like, he was all for the praise of Anthony the other night, and it's the only thing I actually agree with Ten Hag when he's interviewed that he had after the game against Chelsea. Like, he was... <sighs> What he was talking absolute nonsense in most parts, but was big enough Antone in what he did, his work rate, his creation for the goal. Uh, he pretty much had Kukurea on toast, didn't he, in that game? And I think was good enough to warrant a play straight back in the side. I don't know about you guys. I mean, would you put Antony straight back in after that performance? If it meant keeping Marcus Rashford out the side, I think most people would be well and truly up for it. Uh, uh, you've got Ahmad Diallo, who didn't get any game time again against Chelsea, even after Eric Ten Hag had said, look, he's disappointed for him that he's not getting the game time he deserves. Well, if he deserves it, then, yeah, go, bring him in. That's what you have to do. But uh, Liverpool against United, it's always going to be a massive game. It doesn't matter when it is. It doesn't matter that it was only, what, three weeks ago, four weeks ago when... We were all bouncing around Old Trafford after a great FA Cup game and a fantastic win for Manchester United in one of the best atmospheres that I've ever witnessed at the football club in that stadium, especially in recent day, in recent years. It was awesome. It really was. But we have to put that aside now. We have to forget about that. And everything that we had in that game seems to have been unravelled in a way over the last few weeks because the international break was what it was. Great for an international break, for Manchester United anyway, it looked perfect. But when you come to what's happened after that, the two games that Ten Hag wants to ignore in terms of Brentford and Chelsea, then it has all completely unravelled. Like, we were excited to see Rasmus Hoyland back. He's come back a shell of the player that he was before we got his injury. That's probably expected because we need to nurse him back in. But right now we're in that desperation stage where we need him fit and we need him to do stuff. We need him to be pulling Manchester United out of the mire, which is what we're in right now. I had seen that result, Graham, earlier on. It was a fantastic performance from uh, from the young under-18 lads. 9-1 we beat Liverpool. How far away are Manchester United from getting these young and this next crop of kids through? Hopefully under the right structure of Ineos and we can actually produce some really good play because right now they are the best that there are 
out there. They are brilliant right now. And the majority, I, mean, I don't know if you guys watched the highlights of that under 18s game. Fantastic. And the goals were unbelievable as well. And it was on Liverpool's patch, which was even better. So, yeah, credit to them. Uh, I think the under 16s won 5 1 as well. I think Kaz said that before as well. So that's good. Does it bode well for us? I don't think it counts for anything when it comes to this current first team Manchester United setup because we are, let's just say, we're beyond disappointing. We're actually a shambles at the moment in what we're, in how we're playing. Some good moments, and that's all we've got. Are we going to have enough in our tank? to create a couple of moments against Liverpool and then maybe get lucky because we are going to have to get lucky. Liverpool coming back into this in full strength. Endo's coming back. They're obviously on a high from the form that they're on. They beat Sheffield United in midweek as well. I think it was, what, 11 wins in 13 games for Liverpool now in the Premier League alone. Like, that's that's scary. It's like only Manchester City and Arsenal, and obviously they're all up there. Like Arsenal are winning right now. City did the business against Palace earlier on. Liverpool have to respond. This is going to be, I think, a different Liverpool than what we got in the FA Cup game. 100% different because they need this. Like, they are not going to allow Man, they're not going to allow Man United to beat them twice in the space of a month. That is, that is something that won't go down well and won't be accepted at Liverpool. And I think with it being the league and everything that's going on with Klopp, they are going to be chomping at the bit. Like, they are being for blood for Manchester United. They're out for revenge, and I can't see anything but a Liverpool win. Like, I've got the hope of Old Trafford and Manchester United at home, and we can beat anyone. Yes, we can. But I just look at Liverpool's circumstances more than United's, and you do need a reaction. United do need a reaction. But when it comes down to it, when you look at everything and put it all out on the table, Liverpool need this result more than United do right now. Yeah, you can say Ten Hag needs it, but in the whole in the whole grand scheme of things, and you look at what's on the line, Liverpool need a result more. Manchester United fighting for Europa League. We're still in position. If we lose, we're still in the same fight. I think if Liverpool lose to United tomorrow, they can kiss the title goodbye. I think, well... Not so much goodbye. They have got that little lead at the moment, but they can't afford one slip up. Not one slip up. I mean, I think City can outscore them the way that City are going at the moment. So Liverpool are not, uh, yeah, they, they're scoring goals, but they're not doing what Arsenal are doing what and what City are doing. That's where they just turn it on and just smash teams away. Like maybe they will find that form in the last stages of the league uh, this season, but honestly, I just feel like if they lose to United, that is a massive dent. And they've got Europa League this week as well. I know City are in the Champions League, Arsenal in the Champions They're all in Europe. So it's fair, it's fair. Everyone's got the same amount of games and the running is exciting for the neutral and everything like that. But I just feel like Liverpool can't afford to lose this game. They can't. And I just think there's more on the line for Liverpool than United tomorrow. Like Our season is done. Like All we've got is the FA Cup. I do believe that we will get beat. I mean, you only have to look how well Brighton are currently playing against Arsenal and what they're like in the league. You know the record that they've got. I watched Crystal Palace this morning, or sorry, earlier on today against Manchester City. They're going to destroy us. Like, Alise will be back by the time we play them. It's a night game at Sellers Park. Again, always even more awkward. I don't know why, but it just is. And I just look at them, the way that they're playing, where that Brighton are playing. I'm scared for the games against Sheffield and Burnley, like, all we've got is the FA Cup. Like, and I think that is what the league is going to, the Europa League is going to come down to. To get into Europe, by any stretch, I think we have to win the FA Cup and be in the Europa League. That is it. I, I actually think that we will go further down than what the Europa Conference League is. I mean, look at the table. Like, it's right there in front of you. Like, West Ham, yeah, they've played more games, but they're playing for their manager. Manchester United are not. We have still got a lot of tough games. I don't fancy us in any of our away games. I think we're scraping the barrel when we say that we're going to get points against Sheffield United and against Burnley at home. That's it for me. I worry about everything else. We're really going to have to turn up in games and surprise me to get anything from the others. And it's... It's not good. It really isn't good. And it's not It's not a positive outlook. No, it's not. But still, you have to look at reality. Yeah? You have to look at the facts and you have to look at how this team are playing. And it's all right. We're all saying, yeah, we're going to see Ten Hag out. Like we said earlier on today, we're going to see Ten Hag out. Let him see out to the end of the season. But it is all going to come down to that last game of the season in the FA Cup. 
It really is. And I just don't see Man United picking up enough points. I don't see us picking up the points we need to uh, get into the champ. It, forget the Champions League. Don't see us picking up enough points to get into the Europa League. Like looking at the results before and all the games that were going on, then I'm looking at West Ham and looking at Newcastle's results, and everyone's getting excited about Aston Villa dropping points and that. Like Villa are 12 points ahead of us in fourth. 12 points. United need to get four wins just to even compete with Aston Villa. We're only going to have eight games left after tomorrow's game against Liverpool. Are you confident that we can make it? Are you confident we've got four wins in us right now until the end of the season, the way we're playing, with the injuries that we've got as well? Like I said, injuries are no excuse before, but uh, like you cannot expect Willie Camberwella to see us out till the end of the season. Like It's unfair on him. We have got some unbelievable teams coming up, uh, United are coming up against in the next few weeks, and you cannot expect Willie Camberwella to see out that whole thing. We need someone back at least. And what we're saying, we're definitely not going to see Martinez and Lindelof until uh, next month. That's a definite. Uh, we're not going to see Rafael Varane. I don't know where. I've not heard anything in terms of his injury update. So you see my issue in trying to find a result out of this. When you've got the likes of Marcus Rashford coming on and Ten Hag defending him, and if he does play, then we're going to get the same old Marcus Rashford. Like, the mopes in the round sulking, whapped, uh, slapped ass that he has been all season. And I, I just don't see where it comes from. Like, someone may jump up and surprise me and we may get a performance somewhere. But, yeah, Graham says we'll finish six. I don't think so, mate. I think we'll drop further. I do. Uh, inconsistency means United will turn up in games and they will win games they are not expected to. I don't even think that, Graham. Like, I don't like Chelsea, like Liverpool. You, you're looking at one point if we lose tomorrow from three games. And then we're not going to beat Arsenal. I think Newcastle will have more than uh, enough to beat us at home at Old Trafford as well. All of these teams have got something to fight for that we're playing in the end of this season. Nearly every single game has got something on the line for the other team. Manchester United are not going to have anything. Like, we can't get up for anything unless we're actually in a competition like the FA Cup. We can't get up for it. It's a joke. It really is. And I think with everything that's going on, and it was proof as well the other day when Marcus Rashford's brother came out the eve of an actual Premier League game because he knew he was dropped. he come out and started spurting crap out on social media to try and deflect away from the fact that his brother had been dropped out of the team. This is what happens. I'm not trying to doom and gloom and scaremonger and everything like that, but this is how I see it going. Like, someone needs to show me, like someone in this team needs to show me that they're willing to do something different. I need to see a change in all of Manchester United. Like, I I just don't believe that this team has got it right now from what I've watched. The odd performance here and there isn't even going to cut it. It's not. The worrying thing we've got is, it's like the fact that we've got to play Newcastle yet and they're right behind us. Tomorrow's game alone is more drop points in my opinion. I just don't see how we beat Liverpool. We're going to lose to Arsenal. They're way too good for us. Straight away there, you're looking at three defeats. Even if you win the other games against Palace, Brighton, Burnley, Sheffield United, 12 points. What does that put United on? What, six there? That's drastic. That is drastic. I don't know if that'll be enough. I really don't. We will see. We will see. We'll get into the team and what you guys are picking uh, and who you want in in a minute as well. I'm going to come through the comment section. Please give the video a like, guys. Make sure you're subscribing if you're tuning in for the first time. I know there's a lot of football going on at the moment and Arsenal are having their game. But if you are watching back later, catching up with the preview show, uh, it's always the case on a Saturday, Sunday one. Just get your comments in below. Please let me know what you think. Who would your team be going into this game? Uh, Christopher says Rashford is our manager sporting director Rashford thinks he is the best in the world and the only thing Rashford uh, good at uh, is being the most overrated player in the world Daz Salford says I didn't like Eric Tenag in the first place but I will back him to the end of the season he's going to be bad to the end of the season we're going to have to back him to the end of the season mate definitely uh, let me just see. Now, Liam Whitehouse, our season can turn around in three games. We need to string three or four wins on the bounce. We do. I don't see it in the games that we've got. I don't. Uh, Boxing Straight Talk, would we prefer not to be in the Europa League anyway? 
Uh, would we prefer not to be in it? I don't know. I think United need Europe. We cannot fall completely off. I'm looking at the Ineos plan and I'm going, they need something there, don't they? They need something to hold on to and be able to make uh, some form of commercial sponsorship deal, something. Because United not being in Europe definitely hampers our finances massively. Uh, Barbie says, it's running out of time, sadly. Uh, and George says, 11 years uh, is the same... 11 years is the same, 7th place, Moyes, uh, a same, Ten Hag, 7th place in 11 years, nothing. You can imagine that. You can imagine that. Well, I imagine he finishes exactly the same position as Moyes does. Wow, that would be a uh, a disaster, obviously. I think the season has been a disaster anyway. It can be salvaged with the FA Cup a little bit, but let's be let's be brutal. The league is where everyone is looking. The league is what people judge teams' seasons off. And ours has been uh, one disaster after another. A little bit of scraping some form together in results-wise, that's it. But every single game that we've won this season seems to have been on a knife edge and could have gone either way. And if then games didn't go either way, we would be where Chelsea are now. And Wolves, like mid-table fodder. That's what... I mean, you look at all of them, all of the games, like, on a knife edge, could have got, like, Luton, Villa. Like, them games could have easily been drawn or lost. Uh, it's at Burnley all on, early on in the season, away from home. Sheffield United, early on in the season. Like, we're scraping by and by one goal. Like, they have been on a knife edge. We have not been comfortable once this season. And when you look at Liverpool, I mean... The worry that I've got is it's like that inexperience of the defence and who the leaders are in the team for that game tomorrow. Who is going to turn up for Manchester United and take that game by the scruff of the neck? I'm running out of players. Casemiro, I've, I had a lot of hope for. I thought was awful against Chelsea in the week. He had one of his worst games. I thought he'd sort of come back in a way and was the old Casemiro. He was showing signs that he was the old Casemiro, but he just has been awful. Uh, he has, so he hasn't been awful, but he was awful in that game for me. And uh, you know what I thought? Casemiro, he would have been a player that I would have looked to to sort of drag United through a game like like this against Liverpool. I just think because it's the Premier League, it's not the FA Cup, it's not like a knockout format, everything's go, go, go. Like, a draw is no good for United. It would be a good result, but in terms of where we are right now in the league, that's not even good enough. That's where it is right now with United. I just think Liverpool need this win. Liverpool are in a much stronger position squad-wise. They're in better form. I know we were saying this before the FA Cup game, but I just felt like the FA Cup had something else, like a bit more, like a bit more zest to it. The game just sort of had a bit of a different vibe going in, and it's it's a worry that we're going into this game with so many players out of form that we know Ten Hag is going to play when his other players that are actually finding the feet a little bit that he's not going to play. Like, he's not going to play Ahmad. He's probably not going to play Antony. He's going to bring Rashford in. Hoyland's struggling. I understand the names have to be in and they're the better players on paper and they have to play a part, but they're not any, they're nowhere near in shape to play. Like, full 90 minutes at the best. Like, Hoyland is struggling right now. You can see that. I'm hoping he's found a little bit more after the last couple of games. I thought he would have found it after the international break, but it's quite clear that he's not up to match level yet. So hopefully he finds it against Liverpool and we can get something out of him. Because I'm looking at the rest of the front line. Garnacho, yes, can guarantee that he will be putting his shift in again. But it's a lot to ask a young lad to be busting a gut up and down. I would not be surprised when Garnacho pulls up with an injury soon because he is non-stop, what is it, 31 games consistent now? Garnacho, that is, that's a lot. That's a lot for a kid, for a teenager. It really is. It's credit to him. And I I've, I want to praise him. I do. I have that sort of commitment and keeping that level up to be selected every week in, week out is fantastic. But you've got to be honest with yourself. You are a bit concerned that he is going to break down sooner or later because of it. 
And I just think there isn't anyone else that Ten Hag trusts in that squad. So if he doesn't trust anyone, then we're not going to see anyone different. He bigs up Anthony every time he plays him, but never plays him the game after. That's a fact because he did it against Newport when he scored and he got an assist in that game and he was bigging him up then. He literally bought Rashford in the next game and he started Anthony against Chelsea. I fully... I fully uh, expect Rashford to be starting this game against Liverpool. I, I would be surprised if he doesn't, and I would look at that as a massive positive that Ten Hag has actually uh, seen what Anthony was doing against Chelsea and know that that would definitely be something useful in the Liverpool game because he's, we're going to need workers in the Liverpool game. Rashford's not one of them. Like, we're going to have to make it as difficult as possible for them, and you know you're not going to get that work rate from Marcus. Mr. Miracle says, Garnacho played well against Chelsea. First 10 minutes, uh, me and my peeps uh, were like, why is he Why is he doing the Rashford style when he saw Palmer and learned quickly what it meant to be a winger again? Yeah, like Palmer did set an example in that game, like literally carried Chelsea all the way to that win. Like it's embarrassing for Chelsea how they are so much of a one-man band. It really is that desperate for them, but they still beat us. Uh, the honest tiger. We play Liverpool twice this season, and they have not beat us yet. We can beat them again. If not, it can be a draw. Where would you guys be with a draw? Like it doesn't do anything for me. It just looks like a a good result, but re really, it's not. It's not in the whole in the grand scheme. In fact, a draw against Liverpool is a creditable result. It is, and to play three games against Liverpool this season and be unbeaten. That's pretty decent. It is. It is. But for us right now in what we need in the league, it's probably not good enough. It's definitely not good enough for Liverpool. It'll keep them in the race, but they could really do with keeping hold of that advantage that they've got right now. And that's my big concern, like I said. It's like Liverpool, I think, have got more on the line in this game. Uh, Raymond Pearce, four wins and four losses. They win on a uh, goal difference, just saying the truth. Four wins and four losses. Uh, I'm not sure what you're going on about there, Raymond. Just uh, elaborate on that a little bit for me. Moyes equals Ten Hag, says George. Louise is in. She says, "I think we, uh, I think we can take uh, Newcastle, Adam. They have well, they have well dropped off. I mean, they've won the last two games. They've scrapped it out. Good wins as well against Fulham and West Ham for Newcastle. So yeah, it's. I know what you're saying, but our form against Newcastle is diabolical as well." Like the last time we beat them was the Carabao Cup. And I think, what is it? So we had three games last season. We've played them twice more this season. Uh, so in the last five games against Newcastle, the only win we have had has been the Carabao Cup final. That's where we're at. That's pretty bad. That is bad. Uh, we have a new member in the house. Uh, that uh, being Boxing Straight Talk. Good to have you in. Donated by the legend who is London 1965-7. Uh, I have missed a super chat from the man Alien Tenno. I hope you're there tomorrow, Alien. Currently done a number on Leeds. Good luck. Uh, yeah, that is a bit of a worry, isn't it? Like, should we be looking at that Currently game as not a foregone conclusion as well? Uh, cheers for that, Pete, mate. Hope to see you tomorrow. Hopefully you've got tickets. Uh, I will see you outside. And Daz Salford, thank you for the super chat. Daz, legend, I said, what you think? Uh, centre-back, midfield, striker, priority positions. Uh, two centre-backs, striker, centre-midfielder, left-back, right-back. They're the positions we need. But we need all first-team players. Like We cannot go out and buy, like I said this morning, where I go out and buy a Malassia type of player that we know isn't going to be first-team you need guaranteed 11 starters, so like first team players. So if you're going to go out and buy them, you're going to have to spend some money because these guys are going to have to come in and go straight into the team and all of them positions. Maybe not Hoyland. You could probably argue the forward, centre forward is someone who can play second to Hoyland. But if we do manage to get hold of someone that can compete with him and push him for a starting lineup, then even better. Uh, hello, Michael. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Adam, do you think a heavy defeat tomorrow uh, and it's P45 Monday for Eric? No, I don't. I think he will get the chance to at least play the semi-final. If he gets through that, we will see him till the end of the season, definitely. Uh, 
In fact, why would United fans want him to move? Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about there, Graham. What is it? Let me just run back. Ganacho's development is fantastic at United, better than he would get anywhere else. Uh, why should he move? Uh, is someone saying that Ganacho needs to move? Are he saying he should move for his own future or something like that? I don't know. Uh, I'm with Graham on that one. No, I think he will look at the fact that there is a new project at United. He is young and we can improve going forward. He loves this club as well, so he will... I don't think Garnacho's going anywhere. Like He's got a long-term contract. At the end of that contract, maybe we're talking a Ronaldo scenario if he keeps on at this trajectory and improving all the time. But until then, let's not even get into that talk because Graham's right, he's not going anywhere. Uh, you can only sign three. What positions are you filling? Striker, centre midfield, centre back. If they were the only ones I could do, they would be the ones I would bring in. I would look at the youth to bring in and reinforce the fullback positions for now. But you know where I'm at. I want the other positions as well. So I would just, if I could only pick three just for the game's sake, then I would go down spine, right down there, centre forward, centre midfielder, centre back. There would be key positions for me. We definitely need cover. Uh, yes, United on the 18s. I love how everyone keeps bringing this up. Michael's just done it as well. 9 1 against Liverpool. Fantastic. Christopher says, at this time and moment, it wouldn't matter if we didn't have a manager till the end of the season. Could not do any worse. This is a fair point. Uh, Boxing Straight Talk, Coventry are a solid physical team. They remind me of a Luton type playing style, but come on, we should be winning it. Oh, yeah, we should be winning it, mate. 100%. Like, you lose that game, you get sacked. Like, that's it. That is it. Uh. Uh, a YouTube advert just popped up with chicken in it. Uh, do you think that might be a sign? <laughs> Bottle jobs. Anthony says, with our current team, nothing is to be taken for granted. We have no idea which Manchester United will turn up on any given day. No, that is true. And it is a sad indictment of this football club right now. Like, it, there should be a consistency there. That is not there. And I don't know how we get that consistency there. Like these players have given up on Eric Ten Hag. They really have. 2 0 to Arsenal. Just confirmed that by Daz Salford. They are going all guns, pardon the pun, but uh, all guns blazing there, Arsenal. They are looking like they have got the bit between the teeth. That is a good result against Brighton. I remember last season uh, they lost that game, didn't they? And it was part of the downfall for Arsenal in the running. Graham says, I like. Uh, like I said, Coventry also lost at home to Cardiff, previous home game. Uh, they did, but like the other comment said, Graham, they can turn up, and everyone usually does turn up against United. We know the score, so if they can beat Leeds, they can definitely beat United. Uh, I think that is something that these players in United shirts this season have really, really struggled to handle. The, mm, the cup final factor of every single game being everyone out for you. I think they've really, really struggled with it. Uh, Alien Tenor with another super chat. My three signings, manager number two and number three, go from there. Uh, sort of doesn't make sense, that Alien, to be honest, because you only mentioned two. Uh, my three signings, manager number two and manager number three, go from there. Not sure, mate. Louise says... Uh, I do think age is starting to affect him, but I also think this is the South American approach to being publicly insulted. But uh, the break on... I'm not sure what that's about, actually. I think he was talking to someone else there. Was it about Casemiro? I'm not sure. We have another super chat in from Thomas McArdle. says, Adam, if we beat Liverpool and win the FA Cup, uh, that will do for this year. It's all that's left. Like, FA Cup gets us straight into the Europa League. So, you're right. Thomas, uh, that right now is all we deserve. Like Graham said there, he thinks we're just going to finish six. Uh, I can see that, but I can also see United dropping further. Like I, I don't think anyone is paying enough attention to the teams below us who are better than us. I know the table doesn't lie and we're ahead of them. I understand that side of it. But everyone below us is playing better than us right now. We're talking uh, even Wolves who are having... Some crap luck today uh, in the end of that game there against West Ham. But Newcastle are playing better. West Ham are playing better, in my opinion. I think Wolves are playing better. 
Brighton just coming up against a tough side today. I think they're probably playing a little bit better. Uh, and I just think that it's a case of, for us, just expect it to be hard work, like cup finals every single week. That's what it is. Uh, I don't know what you mean, Graham. When did Leeds beat United last? Uh, it's irrelevant to the conversation, isn't it? Uh, Adam, you got it. Uh, it was about Kaz. Thank you, Louise. Fair play for not writing commentary off, Adam. Uh, anything can happen in football. Uh, uh, no, what I'm saying is I'm not saying are uh, bigging up like commentary more just to make something out of it. Like we have to take this seriously. Like the ultimate embarrassment, and if we do lose against commentary, that's Ten Hag done. Like there's no comeback from that. You don't lose to a championship side on the biggest stage at Wembley with the world watching in the most famous cup competition in the world. If you lose to a championship side there, we won't. We will win. I'm confident of that. But let's just say he did, for instance. That is it. That's curtains. See you later, Eric. There's no coming back from that. Uh, not all his fault. We know the other issues we're in. But in terms of football and what needs to happen, because the manager is always the whipping boy, that would be the end of Eric Ten Hag. Uh, I'm a massive Bruno fan, but let's face it, at the moment, he's having a stinker. Mount needs to start instead. Okay, does Mason Mount start? Uh, actually, I'm going to put a poll up now for you guys. Let's get going with that. Uh, does Mason Mount... Oh, my God, spell it right, Adam. Jesus. Does Mason Mount start against Liverpool? Has he had enough game time? Uh, has he been back in and about it enough in his little cameos that he's had? Is it time to start him or do we still need to nurse him in a little bit more? Uh, and who, if you put a yes in the poll section, who does he come in for, please, everyone? Adam Hag destroyed our team with crap summer signings and how many players he loaned out. It's all his fault. Uh, Adam, uh, I mean, Highland's doing all right. If Mount comes back and does something in his running, then he looks okay. I mean, Bain Day, that was a concern. Like, Anana, the jury's still out, even though he is getting a lot better and I've given him his dues. Uh, I wouldn't say it was this summer signings. I wouldn't. Like... The jury's out on Antony. I think how he's not using Ericsson right now is uh, concerning. But, yeah. Uh, I think it's his whole management of in-game stuff that's really topping it for everyone right now. And how he talks as well, obviously. Uh, sorry, Adam. I have seen Newcastle, West Ham, Brighton and Wolves several times. They're not better than Manchester United. Not in an overview of the whole season. I didn't say that, Graham. Oh, you've had a drink today, haven't you, Graham? You have. Like, I said in better form than us right now when there's only eight games to go. The season is gone. And yes, the table doesn't lie, like I said. And we are better than them. But right now, they are better than us form-wise. That's what I'm getting at. That's what I said, mate. Just so it clarifies everything. But I uh, hope you're well, Graham. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow as well, mate. Uh, I've got some uh, filming I need to do with you tomorrow as well, Graham. I've got something lined up for you, mate. Nice, that I think you will like. Uh, so prepare yourself, my man. Uh, I can't judge Bruno properly this year. Every time he plays, uh, he plays bad. Scotty is in the midfield. I need to see Bruno play without Scotty. I don't know who else there is to play with it, though. Like, Casemiro, Menu, and Bruno has been a partnership that everyone's wanted to see. But even when we've had that, it's not looked fantastic, mate, has it? It hasn't. Like... <sighs> I just think with Bruno, he's had one of them seasons. Let's just put it down to a bad season for Bruno and move on from there. Uh, his contract, like I said this morning, is coming up very, very soon. Uh, and I think a decision needs to be made. Like, he'll be into his late 20s, early 30s by the time that contract ends. If he gets a new one, then he's going to be well into his early 30s by the, t excuse me, by the time that that one ends. So, yeah, I think a decision is going to need to be made on Bruno sooner rather than later so let's see what happens there uh, guys please give the video a like we are almost at the 100 like mark come on guys get onto it please download our sofa score app you are going to need it tomorrow against liverpool 
Uh, just to see if Manchester United concede another 30 plus shots in one game. I'm sure all of the statos will be all over that and you will get it direct to your phone on SofaScore. It is free. Download it with our link in the description or the QR code in the bottom right hand corner, guys. Best football app out there. Get on it now. It was fast. It was even ahead of the City game for me today because I was streaming it on my Skypuck and the bleeding score came up on Sofa Score. Like, completely kiboshed it. It's that quick. So, yeah, it's uh, it's not ideal in that scenario, but if you're out and about, you definitely need it. Uh, no, my head's gone. Stop the depression. Graham, I'm not doing the depression. <laughs> Look at the fucking team, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. Your red's gone, Graham. You didn't listen to me. Uh, and I'm right. It's the end of. I'm cutting you off. Uh, I know what I said. And it was the form. They are better, mate. It's as simple as that. I don't care how many times you've watched them. I was talking about the form right now. And they're playing better football than what we are. And let's be honest. If you tell me that United deserve them wins completely, the ones that we've had, then you're even more deluded. Roddy, he's in the house. I'm about Kobe Mount in the middle. Completely mixing it up. Fresh legs. Uh, Mount in, Bruno on the bench. Ahmad in, Rashford on the bench. Or even completely out the match day squad, says Nick. Not bad. United Spotlight. Bruno will be on the right wing again. What's that uh, say about Eric Tenag? Thinks about him uh, when he can't play his own position in big games. I hope not. I hope not. I really do. Uh, Roddy, yes, the obvious choice. Uh, don't think he has uh, had enough games uh, to be up to speed, but there again, that applies to Mount and Ahmad. Uh, one of the biggest issues with Ten Hag's rotations, uh, he has poor last year with he was poor last year with rotations, and this year when he has had fit players to use, he also has not rotated. No, he hasn't. That is a big thing like when he's had the opportunity to change it up he's not and I think that's going to come back to bite him it really will poll wise 72% of you are saying yes start Mason Mount against Liverpool and you are all backing it up with who you would bring him in for as well which is good let's get into my team anyway for the Liverpool game uh, how I would play it Uh I would play Anthony on the right hand side of starting up top. Anthony, I would no actually I would I would like to see Anthony on the left, but he's not gonna, so let's be honest with ourselves. Anthony on the right, Highland in the middle, and Rashford. Sorry, no, Guy Nacho on the left. Jesus Christ, don't swear. Uh so yeah, that's the front three. Midfield, I think it will be Casemiro, Kobe Menu, and Bruno Fernandez. I don't think Mount will get in the team. I would like to see him get more minutes, maybe a bit more, uh, f a bit longer in this game, I would say. But I think he's going to play Bruno Fernandes. Uh, I would play Bruno in this game, personally. I would. Uh, I just think we need that energy, if anything. Someone who can run up and down. And do you know what? Bruno does, doesn't does shirk a tackle. He doesn't. So I would bring him in. I would bring him in. I'd keep him in. I wouldn't bring Mount into the front three, by the way. I know a lot of people have said that. I wouldn't. I would play the natural players in them positions. Obviously, we've got Aaron Wambazaka on the right. We've got Dallow on the left. And it's going to be Camberwala and Harry Maguire because they are apparently, according to reports, the only fit two defenders. And we don't really want to bring anyone in or rush anyone in right now. Like, I know a name looks better on paper, but if that name isn't fit, then it really defeats the object. It's... Oh. It's that what we have done all season. I think that has really affected our injuries. We've not brought players back when they're fully fit and made things worse. So right now, and from now until the end of the season, let's just play players that are fit and raring to go. Anyone that's good that we know is a better player that isn't fit, we just need to ignore that. Like, forget it. Please, please, please beat Liverpool. The only team in the Prem I do not want to win it. Uh, I don't want City to win it either. I really don't. <laughs> Christine Duffy, Varane as captain, professional and calm. Just my opinion, of course. Uh, it'd be nice, but he's not fit for tomorrow by all accounts, so we can't do it tomorrow, Christine. Evening, Adam, and everyone in the chat. Uh, can't see anything other than a loss tomorrow, says UK Strains. Uh, Leacher is a captain 
is captain material, but he hardly stays fit. That is a massive concern as well. Now, like our best players are the ones that we can't get on the bleeding pitch. Uh, and yeah, that is a massive, massive worry going forward as well. And like, this is where the recruitment in the summer uh, are going to have to step it up because we need to research players properly. Like we've brought in players that have had injury issues and we've not seen the most of them this season. Uh, Highland has been missing. Mason Mount has been missing. Uh, we've got, I'm not saying that Martinez is one of them players that we didn't research or No, he was just unlucky with his injuries, but United being United, we haven't nurtured him back. We've not given him the right recruitment, uh, sorry, the right recovery times and tried to force him back too quickly, twice in one season. It's, it's ridiculous. But we was told that Leachow did go against the club's wishes and go to Argentina uh, and go to America to play for Argentina. So the, the club are trying to distance themselves from that decision and move themselves from all blame of that. So let's look at that as well. That could be a possibility. And yeah, I just feel like going into next season, I'm talking next season, I know we've got loads of games left this season yet, but I just want this season done and dusted. I am sick to death of this season already. Like It has been the most painful season ever. And like if I was going up and down the country to win the season at Chelsea, Palace, Bournemouth, Brighton and who's the other one? I think that's all of them. Yeah, like them away games and the travelling involved in them. Like it would just end me because I would know I'd be going there to have our asses handed to us at all of them grounds. Like hopefully me not being there actually changes the look a little bit. I'm going with anything I can, by the way. Like any sort of like omen. Just because I'm not there means that we're not going to lose. Uh, that we are, we're not going to lose. So that's what I'm clinging on to, literally, for anything right now. Uh, we've been deflated in our last two games. Uh, if we if we was on a winning run, we'd have a greater chance of winning tomorrow, says UK Strange. Luke Casey says, I hope Arsenal win the league this year, Adam. Uh, my best friend is a gooner and was diagnosed with terminal prostate cancer. Uh, at the start of the year, so it would mean everything to him. Uh, sorry to wear that, mate. And yeah, in terms of who I want to win the league, I would choose Arsenal just for your best mate as well. But also, I would choose Arsenal because it would mean City and Liverpool both losing out. City can't do four in a row. Klopp is gone with nothing, and that would be probably the best outcome for all United fans. Uh, problem with Leecher and Varane is they're never fit. I think that's why Bruno gets the armband because he plays every game. That's not a reason to be made captain. No, it's not. But like you said, Antone, probably is the only option that Tanaga's got right now in terms of who we can pick. Do I think Casemiro will play if he's fit? Yes, I do think he will play, Graham. I do. If he plays McTominay, then I think we're in trouble. I think we're in big trouble. Uh, even if he's fitter, like I think, I think Casemiro is fit. I do. Uh, maybe he's come back from that slight knock. What he had wasn't completely there and completely ready. I think after that game, I think he will be hopefully ready for tomorrow. I would play him. I would. I just know that Scott McTominay hasn't got the quality to get through this game. You can't have it twice in a row. You can't. You can't get lucky twice in a row against Liverpool, and that's what it will be. There's nothing that convinces me that we are in any shape to take Liverpool down. Like, go out there and surprise us, lads. That's it. That's all I'm saying. People say we need a backup striker to Rasmus, but he seems to get a few injuries too. So I think we need another good striker. Plenty of games for both to play uh, or come uh, on to give the other a rest, says Chris. Here. Yeah, I think that's fair comment. I do. I do think that's fair comment. Uh, I want Manchester City to win the Premier League. Why, Michael? No one should ever want that. Out of everyone, you want Arsenal to win it. Liverpool and City, not to win it, is the only good outcome right now, in my opinion. Uh, let's see what else we've got in here. Uh, I know that pretty much sums up the look ahead, guys. Like, I'm worried. 
Uh, players to look out for, obviously on Liverpool's side, there's tons of them. Uh, McAllister is on fire right now. Obviously, you've got Salah, who loves a goal at Old Trafford. Uh, Nunez, Diaz, I thought both had poor games in the last game. I think they'll be wanting to right some wrongs. I think all of the Liverpool squad is going to be wanting to right some wrongs. I think Liverpool fans are coming to Old Trafford confident tomorrow. I do. I know a lot of them will say, look, it's Old Trafford, Klopp's record, they're scared, but I think they'll be more confident because they had the defeat last time. They've already seen the hardship and the horrible side of what Old Trafford is and being on the wrong end of the result. I think they'll look at this league game and go, this is where we right the wrongs. I think they'll be confident tomorrow. Uh, against Chelsea, Casemiro looked really bad. Uh, he was jogging back and diving into silly tackles. I think his legs have gone and should be moved on this summer. Yeah, Adam, give uh, me a manager for my career mode, please. Realistic, that can win titles. Even if he's not in FIFA, I can create him. Julian Nagelsmann, go with him. That's my pick for United. It's only if United want to get rid of Ten Hag. Uh, that's two of the same messages there. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'll pass on the wishes. Cheers for that, Luke. I hope he's good. Uh, and gets through it okay, mate. Uh, Christopher Hooper, welcome to the Members Club. That gifted by Fred just now. Thank you, Fred. Uh, and guys, yeah, there is also the latest news there in the tweet at the bottom of your screen. And I've now added a little banner with other news going across the bottom as well. Uh, news there being about Manchester United thinking highly of Darren Fletcher and wanting to keep him at the club in some capacity, which I think is right. I think working alongside someone like Jason Wilcox will definitely benefit. Darren Fletcher going forward for his career. Uh, and, yeah, I'm not saying that just because his two sons are in United Academy right now. Uh, but a man that has been through United Academy and knows what it's like. Someone like Wilcox, who has had the experience at City and their academy and the other experiences at Southampton, he's got to his resume now. I think them two working together, I think he's a good combo as well. Uh, so, yeah, there are your the updates on behind the scenes. We've covered absolutely everything. All that's left, guys is to get my ass down to Old Trafford for tomorrow. I will see you live outside Old Trafford. We are going live at half past 11 tomorrow. The paper round is outside. We'll see you outside Old Trafford. We've got loads of content coming your way as well. Uh, and that is us all done and dusted. The talking is done. It's time for the walking. And I will see you all tomorrow, guys. Thank you so much. New members, Super Chats, Legends, everyone. Thank you. Love you all. It's been a crazy week. Hopefully we can finish it with a bang against Liverpool tomorrow. Oh, by the way, score prediction. I'm going to go 3-1 to Liverpool. I know it sounds downbeat, but I just have to go with the reality side of things right now. Uh, I do hope that United win the game, though, and I'll be cheering the Reds on as soon as that whistle blows. Trust me. Uh, and I just pray that they do surprise me a little bit. But, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you all tomorrow. Liverpool.